Happy Halloween, everyone, and welcome to a horror tour in Jurassic World Evolution 2. If you dare, let's hop into the Halloween hamster ball together and ride the horror tour. Welcome on board. Yep, that's me. That's why I don't do face cam. Uh, we have a little bit of a diorama, which we totally, totally missed because you were so distracted by me. <laughs> but there was a little diorama of a Spinosaurus versus T-Rex, which is a hint of what is to come later. Now, speaking of hints of what's to come later, we have our first peek into the burning forest. And we're going to see what kind of dinosaur lurks through there. We're going to follow this hallway and we're going to go into the first exhibit of our horror tour, which is an abandoned research lab where they were extracting venom from the Dilophosaurus in order to create the Scorpius Rex, which we will also have along this tour. So here we go. We're entering the Dilophosaurus domain. This is like a, an abandoned biosyn facility if you squint, if you pretend real hard. So this is where, yeah, they were like doing experiments on the Dilophosaurus in order to, you know, make more dangerous hybrids. And it all went wrong and the dinosaurs escaped and something is actually going wrong over there because <laughs> the Gyrosphere tour has stopped. But you can see the abandoned buildings and the spooky lighting green. Neon green is obviously very spooky. It's very terrifying. We're also getting a glimpse and you heard it as well. A glimpse at the next habitat, which is for the Velociraptors. But we haven't even, we haven't even spotted the Dilophosaurus yet. I have heard them though. Is the tour gonna move? <laughs> Is anything gonna move? <laughs> oh, well, at least we've spotted a dino at this point. So yeah, here through these cracks in the concrete, you get like glimpses at future habitats that we're gonna go through. So you see the raptor paddock over there. Spoiler alert, the raptors are not in the paddock. They're out in the tall grass as we will be as well. Here, we're gonna go right by this resting Dilophosaurus. That's pretty cool couple of them over there as well. Evo, pay attention, look forward. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, thank you. Uh, so as I was pointing, uh, there is the, the like big vat of Dilophosaurus poison. You know, it's full of Dilo saliva. <laughs> to, to, not to put too fine a point on it. We're at a bit of a traffic jam again. That's okay, at least this way we can get... Uh, a little bit more time to experience everything. Here comes another Dilo stalking through its habitat. So the idea here is that um, it is a functioning tour, you know, it is all part of the ride. So the destroyed building, it's not actually an abandoned building, it's all part of the theme park. It's an illusion. And that was really fun to build. I built like half of it during a live stream and the other half I was also supposed to build during a live stream, but you know, technical difficulties are like the bread and butter of this channel <laughs> or the reason why I can only eat bread and butter because <laughs> or dry bread rather because it's not going that great but yeah um so I finished I finished building this in my own time and I figured we'd do a tour for it because it turned out really really fun I think or spooky I should say uh, but it was also just a lot of fun to build so if you don't have any plans for Halloween yet you know like myself if you're just gonna be home alone something fun that you can do is build a tour like that and really get the most out of um, you know out of the destroyed building tool that we have you know the purely aesthetic destruction I love the dialogues just walking through here and also, I really like the lights on the tracks. I wish we could change the color of them, uh, but I love lights. Lights are good. As you can see, there's plenty of lights all the way around. God, that, I really have a face for radio, don't I? Anyway, so that was the Dilophosaurus experience. Now we're going to venture into the Velociraptor habitat. And like our first, our first sort of uh, to whet the appetite, so to speak, is that we see the bunker over here. And that sort of alerts us to what is to come. Of course, the gyrospheres are completely safe. Don't even worry about that. So this tour just sort of zigzags through a couple of areas to build suspense. Kind of get that horror movie feel going, you know. Uh, I'll probably put in some spooky 
spooky music in the background and uh, you know it's it's like it's like to create that feeling that you get when you're watching a horror movie where you don't know what's coming you don't know what's coming and then it's like oh, jump scare and you you like get a clue of the kind of situation you're in the dire dangerous situation that you found yourself in so here we have the raptor paddock sort of recreating the scene from the movie, you know, the, the cold open with the cage and the crane. But of course, the raptors have escaped. And there they are, there they are, there they are. Oh, I'm getting excited. <laughs> ah, nice. Beautiful. Thank you so much for your cooperation. This raptor is a paid actor. Uh, underpaid currently as the strikes are still ongoing. But, you know, we're keeping our fingers crossed for a good outcome for everyone. <laughs> Yeah, come on, we can move now, we can move now. There you go. So the Velociraptors in this paddock are not actually the 1993 raptors. We went with the 2001 females because the suggestion was that they are kind of like ghosts, you know, because they are they are white. Actually, they're kind of also skeletal with like the black stri- I don't, I don't know, I don't know. I'm, just, I'm grasping at straws here, trying to ramble as we go through this tour. But there you have them, the raptors in the tall grass. But perhaps... Perhaps the spookiest thing of all is the log. No, no oh god, that's spooky. <laughs> so this, th there's like this trail cutting through the tall grass, and uh, yeah, you you just be like, you know, looking around. Where are the raptors? Well, in in our case, we just literally passed by every single one of them. But you know, ooh ooh ooh, what's going on? And then you see smoke billowing above the concrete fence over there, and you're just thinking to yourself, "What have I gotten myself into?" Because it's it, it's 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 gonna keep getting worse. Oh, we have one more raptor! Yay, yay for us! <laughs> So the next habitat that we're gonna go into is uh, the uh, a scene. It's like a theme park main street, as you see, but the buildings are all destroyed. Some of the lights are out. And um, what is roaming here is the failed science experiment that they were working on in the lab earlier. So hopefully, we will be seeing the Scorpius Rex stalking around here. Now, of course, the gyrosphere is going to keep us safe from from its poisonous quills. Venomous quills? Uh, comment down below. I know you guys always help me out with that one. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this is where we have the Scorpius Rex. And it's sort of, you know, we've just been through like... Oh god, that's terrifying. We've been through the guest side of this habitat, you know. Uh, where our, our park visitors would supposedly be. And now we're gonna get into like the backstage area, which is also all destroyed. And normally I always hide the backs of the buildings, but for this, for this time I didn't because, you know, we get some nice destruction over here. And we're just zigzagging through in hopes of seeing the Scorpius Rex. Or maybe not, maybe we don't want to see it because it's kind of spooky. <laughs> according to the poll during the live stream, Scorpius Rex was, according to you guys, overwhelmingly the most scary hybrid that we have in the game. So, hopefully... Yeah, I do... It, it is in here, I promise you, it is in here. Somewhere. Anyway, so yeah, this is like the, the backstage area where the park staff would go. And again, it's all still fake, you know, it's all still part of the theme park attraction. It's sleeping. That's not particularly scary. Um, so let's... Ho yeah, come on. Wake up. Wake up, Scorpius Rex. There you go. There you go. Do something spooky. Okay, I could not have timed that better. Um, so many paid actors here. On oh, okay. <laughs> and the strike is back on. All right. I, I love all of the destroyed buildings here, though. That's super, super cool. And, like, you know... You have like those little flyers, little papers in the wind scattering. Okay, is, is this really as scary as it's gonna get? <laughs> so we're just sitting here waiting, waiting patiently. This is, this is perfectly fine. Oh, oh. And there it goes, stalking through this abandoned area. And we're gonna continue our tour. We have the aviary in the distance over there. We're also going to go in there where we have our like our flying demons habitat, so to speak. Nicely destroyed 
power station. I love the like the steam that's coming out of the uh, out of the tubes. That's super super cool. Yeah, the destroyed buildings are helping a lot. So this is like th that update was perfect for like horror builds like this one. Uh, unfortunately, destroying fences still requires an angry and cooperative dinosaur. Um, but, you know, there, there, we have workarounds for that. Uh, just consider that, like, part of the fun. Destroying, destroying some fences with an angry, angry dinosaur. So this is the last bit of our Scorpius Rex habitat. Uh, more backstage area. This is kind of like, um, you know, where they were maybe trying to set up um, you know, with those flashbang things to recapture the Scorpius Rex and reclaim the area and restore it to its former glory. But of course, the Scorpius Rex got in the way of that. Bit of fire coming out of the rooftop. Alrighty. So the next habitat is something I'm very excited about. It's something I think I've built every single Halloween, uh, but it's one of my favorite things to build and Halloween is just the perfect time for it. And you're gonna see what it is, you're gonna see what it is. Uh, but if you are enjoying this tour and if you are enjoying the content on the channel and you wanna see more of it, then consider subscribing to the channel. And um, yeah, here we go. We're gonna go into the graveyard with the Indoraptor perfectly placed right there. I love it. So we're using like all of these signs as the headstones. We're using some spooky lighting. I felt like the uh, the Indoraptor was the perfect choice of dinosaur for this one because how it crawls around, it just sort of evokes that. Like it, like it literally just clawed itself out of a grave like an undead animal and is now just like half alive. Just, yeah, stalking around. It, 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 it was the perfect dinosaur for this habitat, I felt like. So it's just rows upon rows of gravestones. There's like this little wall in between, but you can see that we have even more gravestones on the other side as well. There's another Indoraptor in here. We have a black one and a white one, Jekyll and Hyde. But I suspect in this case, both are evil and bloodthirsty. <laughs> so yeah, here we have the second half of the... Um, of the graveyard and also on the far end there is more mausoleum type graves you know for the fancy people so there's like you know we're pretending that these are like little buildings um and yeah there's like graves in there as well so you can see you know that biosyn statue is just like a really fancy headstone you know investments <laughs> Someone has been saving up their entire life to buy that headstone. <laughs> I I just buy, like, dinosaur stuff, honestly. Oh, but I really love this. I really love this. And I think the green lighting is perfect for this. I, like, did a little bit of blue here and there. Um, I think it looks super, super cool. It is a bit tedious to build. That I will admit. All right, so the next habitat is something that we got a sneak preview of at the very start. This is the Burning Forest. And... The victims in here are the uh, the Carnotaurus. You know they look all scarred and um, they they look like they've they've seen some some terrible things. Am I correct in saying that the Tauros we don't have a burnt Toro skin, do we? No, I don't think so. Oh yeah, cool. So yeah, the ground is just like this rocky texture. I'm using the uh, the dead trees and like hidden behind the dead trees, not too well, uh, but you know, sort of, <laughs> are the torches to sort of, you know, evoke that fiery... It's, it's, it's a force that has gone up in flames. That's really what we're going for. Uh, I also use some orange lighting at certain points as well, like back there. Um... But mostly it's just, you know, the torch is doing, doing the work. So yeah, that is our burning forest. Uh, and you can see, like, all of these habitats have, like, their own different themes, right? Which uh, I felt was just the most fun way to, uh, to build it. Yeah, I had a lot of fun building this, I will say. I'm, I'm really, I'm really sad that the second stream didn't work out as planned. Um, YouTube got a YouTube. But... Yeah, I would, 10 out of 10, I would recommend building something like this for Halloween if you haven't already. So, now we're gonna go into a really long corridor. Again, we're building the suspense. 
And um, we have two more habitats to go. We have the aviary with our flying demons. Um, we have a mistake. <laughs> I just I just saw the spy. Yep, yep, that's a mistake. <laughs> there is a hole in the wall and um, apparently I did not put invisible fencing in, <laughs> in front of it. At least we're getting a good look at the spino. But yeah, it's supposed to be out there. <laughs> there it goes. <laughs> And the idea was that through this hole in the wall, you could look out into the Spinosaurus habitat. And as you can see, there's Jarsaurus going through there as well. We're going to go through there. And that's going to be like our Spino versus T-Rex thing that we teased at the very, very start of the tour with the diorama. Oh, but yeah, this was just supposed to be a very long corridor building the suspense. <laughs> Consider it built. <laughs> and now we're going to go into the aviary where we have Quetzalcoatlus, uh, Merodactylus, and Dimorphodon, which I felt were the freakiest looking flying reptiles of the bunch. Surprisingly, um... There's no Indominus Rex on this tour. I was going to do that, because uh, typically when I go for hybrids, I go all out and I do all of the hybrids. Um, but in the end, I decided against it. I can't really articulate why. <laughs> it's not really a case if I didn't have the space for it. It's just, I don't know, I guess the way I had laid out the tour, it just sort of worked out this way and didn't leave me any space. Um, like conceptually for the Indominus Rex. And we don't need to have the Indominus Rex every single time. And by the way, uh, referencing that poll again that I did during the stream as I built this. Um, oh, a little Dimorphodon on the log. <laughs> no, no, it's not cute. It's not cute. It's spooky. It's spooky. <laughs> it's not cute at all. It's terrifying. <laughs> uh, but yeah, in that poll, Scorpius Rex was by far deemed to be the scariest hybrid of them all. Uh, with the Indoraptor coming in second, but like far behind. And the Indominus Rex really had a low percentage of votes. Like people didn't really agree uh, that the Indominus Rex was all that scary. Even though, you know, I, I, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't want to run into it accidentally or on purpose. But I, I do agree that visually it's not as scary as the other two. I really am rambling, aren't I? Look at me. Oh. <laughs> You sort of get used to that face, don't you? It is a face that needs getting used to. <laughs> and here we have a little abandoned campsite within our demon forest. This is like our haunted forest. And the, um, you know, the, the, the flying reptiles flying around here are like, I don't know, ghosts, vampires, whatever. <laughs> oh, you can just see the Quetzalcoatlus in the distance there sitting on the perch. Oh, it took, it took flight, it took flight, it took flight. Can we see it? Can we see it? No, my big head is in the way. God dang it. <laughs> well, there you go. Oh, at least we have a Merodactylus performing over here. All right, so that was the aviary. We didn't see all that much. <laughs> it's kind of the risk of tours like this. Now we're going to go into the final habitats, which is the... Um, Spinosaurus versus T-Rex habitat. And I want to remind you that this is an actual theme park. And in an actual theme park, they wouldn't really pit two of their biggest attractions against each other. You know, those are multi-million dollar assets walking around. They wouldn't want them. I just knocked something over. They wouldn't want them to actually be fighting and hurting and possibly killing each other. Because that's a whole lot of money down the drain. So what this habitat is, it's something I've done before in other builds, which is quote unquote creating the illusion that the dinosaurs can reach each other when really they can't. So it's two separate habitats. They are separated by the tour track, which is lined with invisible fencing. So the Rex is on that side. <laughs> And the Spinosaurus is on that side. You know, for for the, the theme park realism of it, you could pretend that at, at set times they would both get lured close to each other with, you know, with food. So that, you know, one would stand there and the, the other would stand there and you get like that, that tension. Uh, but they wouldn't actually be fighting each other because, yeah, because I've gone with... 
with approaching this as a real place. And again, a, a real place like this wouldn't want real bloodshed. So that's what I did. Of course, if you're going to build something like this, you can take a different approach and you can actually have them be able to reach each other and fight each other. That would be cool as well. But, you know, I had to I had to stick with a concept. So this is what I start. You can see the wreck sleeping in the distance over there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, no, no, that's the best look we got at the uh, Kesequadless <laughs> flying in the distance in the aviary. It does look creepy, I will say that. It, do it does actually kind of... Yeah, it, it works, it works, it works. So yeah, sleeping absolutely horrifyingly. Like, nobody sleeps more scarily than the T-Rex. <laughs> there it is. I went with the buck skin because it's just, it's just a cool skin, honestly. You can hear it snoring. Terrifying. I'm shaking. Look at me. Look how scared I am. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, Alright, let's see if we can get a better look at the Spino at least. Oh, they're waking up from a nap, I see. Yes, Evo is pointing at some, some very relevant things. Yes, alright. Oh, it's not a full moon. I would have howled otherwise. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's nice. I mean, it's not, it's not fantastic, but... There it is. I feel like this... I feel... If I, if I was actually here... Um... I, uh, like... <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna make a dirty joke. I was, I was gonna make a dirty joke. <laughs> I was gonna say they're gonna have to wipe down the seat. I mean, because I would have peed my pants, okay? Jesus Christ, okay. Well, <laughs> but if leave a like, leave a like for me embarrassing myself. All right, <laughs> it really does help out a lot if you guys leave a like on the videos. Uh, if you are, if you are enjoying it. If you are enjoying the videos, if you get that icky feeling of, hey, I actually like this, uh, give the video a thumbs up. It helps It helps me out. It helps the channel out so, so much. And, you know, I have been quite absent for the past couple of weeks as I've been dealing with my sick pet. It's just, like, taking up so much, like, mental space. I don't know how else to say it. It's, it's, it's just, like, occupies a huge part of my brain real estate. <laughs> Which, you know, considering how smooth-brained I am, isn't that much to begin with. Uh, so yeah, it's just been really, really difficult trying to uh, get get the creative uh, juices flowing. God, <laughs> that in combination with the wiping down the seeds. Okay, I'm gonna stop now. But anyway, uh, I really do hope that we can still make it to 200,000 subscribers by the end of the year. That was the goal. It's gonna be tough, but if you want to support the channel and get us to that point, I would really, really appreciate it. So subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And hopefully next week, we're gonna get some exciting news from Frontier because it will be the second year anniversary of the game. So fingers crossed that we're gonna get a gift. Thank you so much for watching, liking, subscribing, and until next time... Enjoy the game.